here we are. We're gonna do some saw repair. And this is one of them things that anybody that's run enough chainsaws and bought a new one, once in a while you get a screw that rattles loose or a bolt comes off or maybe one of your mounts loosens up. <clears throat> so when I've been preaching to Chris, I said, you gotta check all your screws once in a while, right? Yep. Guess what happened to me? <laughs> Dirty, rotten dog. So I had my saw part the other day. I'm gonna clean my, my air filter, right? And then of course, you gotta have a number 10 Torx to get the freaking thing off if you don't have the right size screwdriver. So, Mine has a nut on top. And I didn't, yeah, that's how it is on yeah. that saw. Mine, see it's that. So now I got the proper tool in my tool kit. So I'm looking things over. I said, geez, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna check these screws. Stripped, stripped. I'm like, son of a gun. So I've been screwing with this since yesterday, actually two days ago, when I realized it. And the bigger saws are more guilty, wouldn't you say? Yeah, oh, they vibrate. You got so much power and shock. And little saws, I never had to nut loose ever. But the big ones, quite often. It happens all the time. So, you know, you got your decompression button here, kind of hangs you up. But So these two screw holes are stripped. Oh, yeah. They're very script. There's a little bit of threads on this one, and there's almost none on this one. So to get these screws out, you gotta basically push them out and screw them out at the same time, because they're threaded through the plastic. Can you push on that? Oh, I can do that. That's a nice nail you got there. That's from beaver trap in last spring. It's, it's almost, still healed. that's yeah. from last April. Well, I smashed it way up here, oh. so it had to grow out. That's a good one. That was a good one, yeah. You could store food in that. But it <laughs> gotta be careful, cause it catches on everything. It's about to the point where it's gonna rip off one of these days, and I might cry might a little actually bit. Actually, what you might wanna do, seriously, is fill it in. Okay, so there's the stripped out one, one screw. I tried, I tried taping, didn't work. Okay, we gotta get the other one out here yet, no? I'm trying to turn this. I'm fighting you, you're pushing too hard. Just, well, I gotta push a little. Yes, you do. Just, I can't hold the screwdriver. And, Can I do something? Or I'm out of whack. Just tell us what to do, Leroy. Tell us what to do and go have a beer. How about yeah. that for you? Oh, guess what? Look at that. He's well, having the beer. Having the beer. <laughs> All right, he's on the payroll. He's on the payroll. Yeah, I'm on the payroll. He yeah. works for beer. He's got to have it. You know, yeah. it's just how it is. Okay, so there's our screw. So my original plan was thinking, well, maybe a guy can buy a little Healy coil, retap it. Boy, there's not a lot to work with there. So then I thought, well, I'll just cut this screw off, turn it around, or or get a screw about that size and JB welded in here. Well, I got some screws, guess what? You can't get a nut in this little hole. Unless you're gonna drill this hole out bigger. You can get a smaller size screw, which I have, and get a little nut on it, but you can't get anything in the hole to tighten it. So what I came up with, I made these studs and I got a collar on them, so the, the, the nut is only going to be on the very top. So these are going to sit in here like this. Oh, I see. You know, we got to get it all squared up, put the cover on. I'm going to JB weld them on, and so then I can get, I can get, these will stick out. Just enough, yeah. Just enough. Because there's not a lot of pressure on these bolts, so... This is my repair job. I don't know how it's going to go. This might fail, but I couldn't come up with anything else because you cannot get a nut driver down in this hole. Right. If this hole wasn't so small, it would be no issue. The only other option would be if you retapped it, right? Right, right. And I don't have the right tap stuff for that. It's like I'm going to try this. We're going to see what happens. Well, I should have. I got trap too. Oh, I got, well, I got taps too, yeah. but. There's not much to work with there. No, there's not. There's very little to work with. Yeah. No, and it's aluminum. 
I almost need to just re-pour it, re-drill it. So we, we have our JB Weld here. This is, this is going to be a see what happens job. And it's not going to take much. That's probably three times as much as I oh, need, yeah, but, but I'd rather have some extra. Yeah. For any of you guys that have used JB Weld, this stuff is, you can fix a lot of stuff oh, with this. This is amazing like epoxy. You got to set right. Okay, so we're gonna do some JB Weld magic here. You got everything else ready to go? Yep, everything's ready to go. We just, just gotta get this mixed. Now, according to the instructions on the JB Weld, are you supposed to use cardboard? You can use whatever I want. Are you, to, are you supposed to use? I could do this on your forehead if I wanted to. You're supposed to use a stick of that size. <laughs> All that matters okay. is that it gets done. So now it's mixed. So now what I got to do? Okay, I got these marked right and left. Okay, I got them in the right spot, right and left. I screwed around with this for two hours last night, just trying to figure this out. And I still don't know if it's going to work. So your JV weld is setting right now. So we got a, we got a couple minutes here. I know. But I want everything lined up, so I'm going to put the top on. I'm going to snug this screw down a little bit. That's the one thing I don't like about the. Oh yeah, I can't do that. I got to put the I got to put the stud in first. Son of a gun! Mm. Can't do that. Okay, so we actually got to put our JB well in first. And it ain't going to take much for them little holes. If the boss would have been giving his proper instructions back there, but he's too busy with his beer. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> and what I'll end up doing is probably sanding off all this goop on the outside here. Yeah. And I forgot, I was going to tell myself I was going to put grease on, there, on the yeah. cover. Yeah. So you could wipe it off. So yeah. I could wipe, at least wipe off the cover. Because yeah, so I'll that's going to sink right down in there and you can't get the cover yeah. off. All right, so where's my grease? This is a delicate operation we're doing here right now. So I'm thinking there's more than enough in that hole. Because once that stud goes down in there. That's pretty good. But it's going to ooze out around it. Yeah. What are you going to do? I'm just putting grease on here so the JB Weld doesn't stick. We don't want right. to. We don't want to JB Weld the cover down. Yeah. Yeah. You have to bust the so cover to get it off. That grease. That grease will prevent that. And I just asked Ken when the camera's off. The JB Weld is it stronger actually than aluminum? Because I was worried about the JB Weld not holding as well as the aluminum did, but apparently it's actually stronger. So here we, we go. So now we're gonna get them down in there. Where's the other one? At the right on the right? Yep, right on the right, left on the left. Oh, that's down too far. Put that nut on and pull it out a little bit. Come on, you dirty dog, catch. You need fine, you fine you fingers for this job. And yeah, you need to, I think you got a hold of it. Yeah, I got her pretty good. So, where's that other nut? And that one's good. I got a good full nut on that one. That one's a little iffy. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop it out of there just a hair and I'm going to wedge it. So it doesn't drop. To keep it centered. With these fine little wedges I got. These are custom made wedges here. Yep. Cedar. Or something. They're wood. So that's pretty centered right there. Yeah. I'm going to have to get another little sliver someplace. All right, so we're just doing a little uh, shimming. Shimming. We want these centered. The best we can get them. Yeah, well, that's not going so good. That one there is actually just where it needs to be. Right there. So now we're going to wait two days and see what happens. 
because there's nothing else I can do. No, that's about that it. That JB Wells got a cure. I got enough here to do about 20 of them holes, but yeah. whatever. But the moral of the story is check your knots. Check your knots. <laughs> and these two here, seriously, this is the first time I've had this filter off. Well, I've had it off before, but because I didn't have the, the number 10 Torx, it does have little slots in there for a screwdriver, but I didn't have a small screwdriver in my tool kit. So I always just would blow it out with air. And you know, this kind of covers those. It doesn't cover them. But you know, I took this, I, I checked this one. I'm thinking, well, there's gotta be some other screws. And I put the screwdriver, I'm like, oh, I did it. They're both stripped. And them are hard to fix. So I'm gonna do is put some weight down here. So this is down harder, flatter. I might just put like some kind of clamp on it or something. And there's nothing I can do for two more days. So you'll hear from Chris or me eventually how this worked. I don't know. I'll just probably drop in a title at the end. It worked. <laughs> it worked. Fail. <laughs> One of the two. So I got some clamps here. I'm going to clamp this so that I can see it squeeze down. Yeah. I'll get some clamps. Let's see what I got here. Oh, yeah. yeah, it ain't moving. I got her. It's as tight as it's going to go. Okay. So, we just did a saw repair. I don't know if Chris is going to have the same video probably. Yep, but it'll be on the same one. When you buy these bigger saws, and this isn't a big saw, it's a 72cc. That The other saw, we just, hopefully we doctored it to, hopefully it'll work. It was a 395, and that thing's like a chainsaw in your hands. A These motorcycle. saws got a lot more... Like a motorcycle in your Yeah, hands. yeah, it <laughs> is a chainsaw. <laughs> you know what and you it is, I mean, it's like, bup, 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 bup. you know, it's, it wraps. I mean, it, I, it's awesome. Anyways, when you get in these bigger CC saws, especially when they're new, you need to check every screw on here periodically because they will vibrate loose. Very common on these is these in here. Yep. And these here, you'll lose these once in a while. Yep. Your mounts, which is right here. See, that's tight. And your handles, there's a little yeah, twist there. Bit. Not much, not much. Here's another mount here. And yeah, I get a little bit. You don't want to strip them. If you ever get your handle where it's just super loose instantly and it's just all over the place, Spring broke. I've had springs break. A yeah. Times. Now this saw, I suspect, has a cracked spring on it because I got a vibration in this. It's oh. driving me nuts. This is a John Shred cover. My other one busted a chunk out here. It's it it fits, so I don't care. So basically, just all your screws, your your cover, like these here. This is your top cover, which I just fixed on the other one. That doesn't fit in there. I need a regular screwdriver in there. So that's good. And see, that's what got me on that 395. See, on the 372, they're right here on the outside. On the 395, they're inside this cover, and I never realized it. And these do have something in here. I don't know what they are, but just check them out. They're tight. They're tight, so... But see, the 395 is new to me. I've been running 372s, 371s, 272s forever. So it just never occurred to me they were inside. And it's like, oh, and I went to check them and they were stripped. And it's sick. Oh, it's just sick. That's a brand new saw. I don't have 20 tanks through that saw yet. So this actually needs to be blown out. I'm going to leave this cover off. But all your mounts you need to check. Your handle mounts, your... Here, here, where your, your shocks are, here, here, your muffler mounts. I've lost a couple of these already. Where you so, yeah. One sticking out halfway, and then. Usually, if it's sticking it. out, it's already stripped. Yeah, because it's just shaking in there. Well, I got mine in, but the other problem was the other one was gone. So. Well, I got a whole bag. Yeah, I bought some too. I have a whole bag here of different, different screws. Well, here's springs. Yeah. Springs. Yep. Here's a new starter switch. Here's a snap ring. Of course, you lose that. Okay, here's that little white thing on your outside cover for your glide. That's what that is. 
This is a whole new adjustment for the outside cover on a 372. Oh, for the tightener chain, for the tightener. Yep. 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 And then I got another bag here. This I keep this kit with me at all times. Yeah, because when you're out on a job, you want to be able to fix something. Okay, there's a new bearing. So once in a while you blow out a bearing on your. There it is. Oh, yeah. There's two of them right there. There's the snap rings. Yep. There's what a couple different sprocket? styles. You got a spare sprocket or two. There's right two here. brand new ones right there. Yeah. And what's in there? That's a fuel filter and a, some earplugs. Actually, I think there's there's four brand new rings, yep. which you should replace more often than you do. Yeah, I've only replaced them a couple times. Here's a new fuel line. Yep. There's four fuel filters in there. Yep. This is just common every day. I still ain't finding my screws. There we are. Yep. There's all them odds and ends and little screws that you randomly replace. They're all in there. So, I mean, I carry this kit with me everywhere I go. If one little thing happens, you can be fixed in five minutes and back running. Especially if you're traveling long distance. And, well, like me working in the woods my whole life doing this, when you're 50 miles from home, and you got to go home because you lost a screw. Because yeah. I get paid for what I do, not, not my driving time or nothing. It's yeah. production work. Plus you want spare saws. If you're well, and that's why I always stuck with the 372s because all the parts would fit all my saws. Well, now I got the 395s, so now there's going to be some extra stuff. But it was nice the 395 came with this T-handled scrunchie. Allen wrench, you know, this is for the muffler bolts on the, the yeah. 395's got actually nut, double nutted on the front. So, anyway, yeah, it's the kind of stuff you gotta just have on hand, you know. This is probably $150 worth of spare parts in here. As, as small as this is, it's more than you think. Yeah. But after 30 years, you just kind of stockpile stuff, so. Okay, okay, so what's the moral of the story? Check your nuts. And if you don't and like bolts, and screws, bolts, screws, yep. whatever you want to call them. And if you don't like to check your nuts, have somebody else check your nuts. Because Tony would like that. Yeah, Tony would like that. You could go to Tony's. <laughs> have check your nuts. You could probably have a special you conversation. Got it. And all equipment and all equipment. You got to make sure yep. your stuff is tightened up because stuff loosens up on you. You can have problems. It's very common with these bigger size saws, especially when they're new. Well, you got all that vibration. It's a lot of vibration, and you don't feel it because of the anti-vibration. Them springs right. are awesome. Them old saws sucked. Oh, yeah, you, That's why my hands are numb all the well, time. That's why a lot of the old timers have numb fingers. They say I that. have that. Yeah, well. I am an old timer now, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> so that's so, it for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Hit the buttons. You know what to do. Hit the like, subscribe. Come back tomorrow. We'll be back in the wood yard again. It'll be fun. Between now and then, get outside, get cutting. Good night, Irene.